The rooftop solar PV RTS PV segment is one of the fastest growing uh, segments across the world. In 2022, uh, the world's rooftop solar capacity increased by 49% and is slated to continue the pace with installation of another 159 gigawatt by the end of 2023. Solar rooftop with its flexibility has some advantages. It offers the ability to provide reliable power for both rural and urban consumers, scale up investments through multiple investors, empower energy end users, and enhance energy security issues while helping utilities address critical transmission and distribution losses. In India, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which is MNRE, had set aside a target of 100 gigawatt of solar capacity by 2022. It has a highly conducive market and investment environment and has seen significant growth in rooftop solar as well, most of it in just the last three years. Hi, I am Jayachan Shiv and I lead the Renewable Energy Program at the Center for Science and Environment. According to MNRE's estimates, India has a solar potential of about 750 gigawatt. RTS potential can be estimated at around 30 to 40 percent of total solar potential on a conservative side. The solar sector in India has had significant growth over the past decade, especially with ground mounted solar leading the way. Rooftop solar on the other hand has been lagging despite various policy measures and market mechanisms. This chart provides the growth in capacity of RTS PV in India over the past five years. Since 2019, uh, which saw a 65 percent addition, the year-on-year -year growth rate has been consistent except for 2020, which saw a 39 percent dip from the previous year. The growth revived in the following years. As on 30th June 2023, total rooftop capacity stands at 12.7 gigawatt. By the end of financial year 2024, India is likely to achieve 4 gigawatt at a pace consistent with previous years. This next chart gives us the segment distribution. The CNI segment collectively accounts for about 80 percent of the total installed rooftop solar capacity. However, uh, despite consistent growth, the solar sector has been able to achieve just less than one third of the target of 40 gigawatt envisaged till 2022. On August 20, 2019, the Government of India sanctioned Phase 2 of the Grid Connected Rooftop and Small Solar Power Plants program. Uh, the DISCOMs and their local offices were made the nodal points to implement this. And the Ministry later extended the deadline of the Rooftop Solar program Phase 2 till 2026. Under this program, 4000 megawatt rooftop solar capacity addition is targeted through Central Financial Assistance, which is CFA in the residential sector including for households in rural areas. One of the important objectives of this second phase of the government program was to generate a supplementary rooftop solar PV capacity of 38 gigawatt by December 31, 2022. This was to be achieved uh, by incentivizing the DISCOMs of which 4 gigawatt for residential areas and 34 gigawatt for other sectors. According to the updated nationally determined contributions NDCs submitted to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and that is UNFCCC in August 2022, India set ambitious targets to reduce the emission intensity, a target capacity of 500 gigawatt by 2030 through non-fossil fuel was also announced at COP26 by the Prime Minister of India. The National Electricity Plan 2023 also emphasizes significant solar and wind capacity addition by 2031-32. There are various business management models to implement these targets. Rooftop solar PV has been predominantly installed in the country under the end user based capital expenditure that is CAPEX model or the developer based operational expenditure that is OPEX model. The CAPEX model involves the installation of the complete solar PV system by suitable engineering, procurement and construction that is EPC organization 
on complete execution of the project it is handed over to the developer the opex model is managed in the form of a renewable energy service company that is resco that owns and invests in the solar pv project while the end user pays for the energy generated one of the challenging features in the resco model is the transition of the role of the discom to an active rts pv developer and producer uh, they are up to date about end user behaviors and they also manage grid interconnections, metering, inspections, billing cycles and EPC services. Thus, they are fully equipped to take on the role of a generator, developer and facilitator of residential rooftop solar PV projects. There are metering models for rooftop solar PV systems based on usage and connection to the grid. Apart from these basic models, other models like net billing, solar power purchase agreements, a PPA and leasing models also exist. Unfortunately, some of these models are less prevalent in the Indian solar PV market. In India, the market evolved under the Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission JNNSM. This was accompanied by central financial assistance for the residential segment followed by performance linked incentives that is PLI to the distribution utilities for achieving success in deploying the solar rooftop PV. The market grew with the policy and regulatory support. Consequentially, uh, competitive bidding projects and aggregation of projects resulted in a lowering of installation costs. However, despite a reduction in prices, the market is yet to witness the anticipated growth. The maximum uptake has been among commercial and industrial that is CNI and users primarily due to low cost of installation with a cumulative share of about 80 percent. As far as the residential sector is concerned, various complexities are the reasons behind low uptake of RTS PV. Challenges of rooftop rights, financial credit worthiness of rooftop owners, the small size of the RTS PV system which makes it unattractive for third party investors or rescos. Lack of transparency and awareness among consumers regarding the transfer of benefits in terms of monetary savings or overall energy savings. Rooftop systems become more challenging in rural setup, facing frequent power outages, especially for CNI net metered customers. They have to rely upon other backup systems such as the DG systems to be able to continue generating solar power. The majority of the states in India are struggling to achieve the envisage targets. 25 out of 35 states and UTs with RTS targets have been able to contribute towards the total RTS capacity in the country. States like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka and Rajasthan are leading the way cumulatively contributing about 58 percent of the total RTS capacity in the country. Interestingly, while the residential segment dominates the share with 74 percent of total RTS capacity in Gujarat, other states have a greater share of industrial consumers. However, the overall national achievement rate versus the allocated target is not highly encouraging at 32 percent, even in comparison with ground mounted solar capacity targets. RTS capacity accounts for as low as 17 percent of total solar capacity in India. So, how do we mitigate these challenges? Although the rooftop solar PV industry is small, uh, it is more distributed than large scale solar PV, a dedicated role of utilities in pursuing demand aggregation programs can improve the market dynamics, especially for the residential sector. Consumers need to have access to a bundle of policy options to choose from such as net metering, net billing, gross metering, zero export, etc. Sometimes, due to the restrictive nature of the policies, consumers find it difficult to have a seamless experience from the perspective of overall performance and monetary savings. Most importantly, a strong institutional and seamless procedural systems, preferably digital, is required to advance RTS right from project registration to dispersal of subsidies in a time bound manner. Availability of adequate number of vendors, solar system installers that would require a skilled workforce Aggregate capacity to ensure demand and timely disbursal of financial assistance would be the key to advance or accelerate RTS adoption in the country. Looking at the business models, especially in the rooftop segment, OPEC share has been about 28% over the past 5 years. 
However, it has been declining steadily year on year. The declining trend implies the need for revisiting PPA structures and more robust dispute resolution mechanisms. This along with the declining value of large scale solar projects, land acquisition issues, tax uncertainties and import duties present crucial challenges especially from the perspective of creating an energy services market in the rooftop space.